Good morning, it's Wednesday and today's a fairly busy day at FenVet. We started out the day with getting a emergency bear, a bear cub that had been rescued. The, the bear was covered in oil and was having issues with being able to groom itself. He was incredibly uncomfortable. Is this the bear? Good morning. Good morning. We put a jacket on her because we didn't want her uh, licking the... Oh, she's oh, so covered. So small. Yeah. Oh Okay, do you want me to? Sure. <laughs> I don't know what this is gonna look like. Hey, baby. Okay, pop it. I've also got cat gloves. I got her. Cody? Good, yeah, let's just get a wage right here. Just a little 3.8 kilos. Okay. Give or take a couple of. Okay. <laughs> So she seems maybe a little bit anemic. Yeah, she probably is. Did you notice any ticks or anything on her? No. It's hard to tell. I think they probably got killed by the bitchin'. And... That's a baby. They're just so amazingly tough. Right. And powerful, even at this size. Oh, baby. I know. And this is after a lot of cutting. Right. And she's been very active and playful. They are just such amazing animals. So Dr. Cody sedated her and they gave her a really good bath with uh, Dawn dish soap. I'm sure you've seen the commercials about uh, ducks being bathed in it. So that's exactly what we used. So this little bear was rescued out of a bitumen pond. So if they were able to find a black bear sedation protocol and looked in the literature and dish soap is the best way to get rid of this. So we're just gonna spend the next couple hours scrubbing baby bear. Okay, please don't bite my fingers off. He's pretty gorked. He is pretty gorked. When black bears are rescued, by law they have to be returned back into the wild by October, um, which is, if you talk to anybody who's done black bear rescue, it's too early. They need another year for them to get smarter and bigger and be able to compete for food. Is that not the cutest face you've ever seen in your life? This episode is sponsored by Whisker Cloud. Whisker Cloud is the premier designer of veterinary websites. If you want the best website in the game, go to whiskercloud.com slash Cody. While Cody and the team was focused on that, I switched over and was doing some routine surgeries. So we started with a moderate sized young dog, Spay. She was about six months old. This dog also had a hernia too, so the incision's bigger because she had a defect in her body wall. So we removed the, the little pocket that was sticking out with some guts in it. What this is, is it's actually a defect in the body wall where during development, it doesn't close properly. So part of her fat and tissue inside her abdomen was popping outside of that hole. And even though the skin covered over it, there's still a risk of things getting trapped in that hole as she grows. So when we did her spay, we also removed that extra defect and closed it up again so she doesn't have any issues with that in the future. So I'm just give her a shot of painkiller and anti-inflammatory. Look, has a chance to kick in before she really wakes up. And then she's done. She's out of here. Hi. Hi. Cody, Hi. what's going on, man? I'll take that now. Is come that a, a bath? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come, here. come, here. come see what I got here. But you can't guess. Guess what's in here. Guess what's in this tub right now. Yeah. Guess what's in here. It's got to be a dog, right? Just. Okay, well, say. Doesn't have to be. Would breathe? No, you're wrong. It's not a dog. Oh, well, then Guess I lose already. What is it, a wolf? He's a bear. Holy jumper! <laughs> Shoot, I don't have my phone either. There's a, ba a black bear that was rescued from the oil sands and is covered in bitumen. And so how old? This one was born in February, they think. Wow, unreal. Do they, do they, do they, oh, yeah. oh, I saw it, like, obviously look, it was a little tag or look anything. At these, look at these little paws. Yeah, unreal, eh? I don't think I've ever seen them. I've seen them at the zoo, but not that small. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That it's is incredible. Awful. I know, it's really it's terrible. So cute. And it's coming off the oil? It is. Yeah. Yeah, like slowly but surely, it's dissolving. A big rinse. A big rinse. Let's try and clean up the top and... Hey, Oh, 
cucumbers in your eyeballs. Yeah, we do need cucumbers in there. Ah, just chillax it. Get this bar. <laughs> now, did I drop something? I did the brush. Belly? It's very nasty. Our second spay was a little bit smaller. Um, a small little dog, which was also about six months old. That took me a while to intubate her, so I'm just gonna give her a little more of her induction agent so that she can relax and settle in. She was a very routine spay. The smaller and younger dogs are usually pretty quick surgeries just because they don't have the vasculature going or the vessels going to the, the ovaries and the uterus yet. So we don't worry about it as much bleeding. They typically bounce back fast after. The next up thing we're going to do is we're going to remove an eye on a cat. This is a six-year-old male neutered cat that presented to us yesterday for having um, some eye issues. The cat initially was seen by a different veterinarian and had a superficial ulcer on its eye. Now, a superficial ulcer is essentially a cut on the eye that's been infected with bacteria. And the, the bad thing about these is they can go south really quickly. The cat was, didn't like getting the eye drops in its eyes. The owners were unable to do it as frequently as they liked or as frequently as prescribed. So the ulcer did get worse. So by the time I saw it, it had turned into what we call a melting ulcer. And this is where it actually goes deeper into the deeper layers of the eye and starts to become quite quite an issue in terms of the cat's ability to see, pain increases, um, and it significantly damages the eye. So we talked to the owners about the different options. Option number one would be referral to a veterinary ophthalmologist for further planning. Option two is we could start treatment here or send them with treatment to do at home. But the unfortunate thing was the beginning of the treatment was going to be drops every hour for 24 to 48 hours and then continued drops after that. Now, this kitty cat was already resistant to getting drops four to six times a day. So doing it every hour just wasn't functional with their life. So our third option was removing the eye, which is a perfectly fine option considering we're getting rid of the pain quickly and animals do great with just one eye. So today we're gonna remove his eye and he will recover in the next week, week and a half and be back to his normal self again. Final rinse and now we're gonna take some blood samples uh, just for a research project. And we are also going to take a tissue sample for a research project. That's how you wash a baby better. Okay. Want her on here? Yep. You want back down or front down? Uh, just like, just straight down. Straight down. I'm gonna get a towel, another towel. Get all cleaned up. There's a bunch of different research things that they could potentially do with it. So DNA markers, um, also looking for things like toxins, and just overall general health. So we got our blood draws. Just to understand the epidemiology of things that they're working with, uh, also important for us to understand ecological health. We also got some feces as well. So we could look at uh, parasite burden, see what type of parasites this little buddy's picked up. What are you doing, Nicole? Feeding a baby bear. He's recovering very nicely. He it's is. like he's happier not to be all sticky. I think so. He is hungry.